We're still on SACOs, guys. We're still discussing SACOs, Savings and Credit Cooperative Societies or Credit Unions. That's what we'll continue with today. And today we're looking at what do you need to watch out for and how do you do due diligence when you are thinking about a SACO to join. This is Rena Hicks and you're on Money Wise, where we create, grow and preserve. Yeah, so some of you have wondered, okay, so is this a great SACO? I have an opportunity to invest and to join this SACO and benefit from it, but is it a good SACO? One of the things that you must do when you are thinking about joining a SACO, and the first thing I would do is talk to others who are already members of that SACO because they have experiences. You know, somebody wants to get a loan and the SACO may say in their glossy paper that, yeah, you get loans in one day and 24 hours processing. But those who have experienced that SACO will tell you it takes a week or it takes three days and this is, it takes so long. They don't respond. They don't pick up calls. They're so unresponsive. It's really frustrating. It's good to just hear what others have experienced and continue to experience in that SACO before you sign that dotted line. The other thing that you must do is read the bylaws. Every SACO is governed by certain rules, all right? That are not, it's not a regulation from a governing body, no. It's, actually rules that are specific to that circle and so it's important to understand what are the rules um, that govern the circle how do i exit if i want to exit how do i join um, if i want to sell my shares is there a market a ready market for me to be able to do that is it difficult for people to enter and come out if i save um, how much what is the minimum amount i have to save every month if i don't have the money this month and i'm not able to save for the next five months what happens to me are there any penalties that, you know there's all sorts of things that you need to just check with each circle that you're considering um, and perhaps you can look at two that you could possibly join based on um, you know areas that you find this common vision and a common goal where the SACO is concerned. The other thing that you need to look at is because SACOs are owned and managed by their membership, there's a limitation on expertise and skill, you know. So what happens is that they are limited as far as what their uh, leadership can do. So your board is composed by people who are within the SACO. So for example, if the SACO is for farmers, all right, then all of you will be farmers. The board will be farmers, maybe perhaps uh, with an education or without, I don't know, but it will be limited by the experience and expertise of those farmers. And so the way that that circle will grow will be limited by the membership um, and the experience. And so as you look at whichever circle, and by the way, I'm not saying a farmer circle is bad, I'm just saying there are certain things some circles will not be able to do just by virtue of the fact that they are limited by their experience and expertise. Those circles that have a little, um, opened up a little to more than just their area of expertise, get membership that is diverse. And that's usually the best circle because that way then you have membership that are experienced in other areas and can contribute value to the circle to see it grow. So you might be in a circle say for people who are in the energy sector and that's everybody from people who work at Kenya Power to GDC to everywhere to uh, in, anybody who is within that realm. And so they are accountants, they are lawyers, they are engineers, there are administrative people, there are HR people, there are all kinds of people with all kinds of expertise in that circle. And a circle that is like that is a good one to join because then you benefit from the experience and expertise of everybody. So that is a key thing to look at. Who's the member of the board? Who are the members of the board? What experience do they have? What experience are they bringing to the table? You know, are they going to help us to go to that next level that we need to as a circle? Are they going to choose investments that are good for us? Because if you have members of a circle who are board members, and have no idea how to read a financial statement, then you're going to be in trouble. So those are things that you must, 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 must look, at, look at. The other thing is that um, you need to be aware that voting in a circle is done through a delegate system. All right, so how are delegates even chosen? And, and how is that process carried out? So that then I make sure that my interests will be taken care of and things will be done in the right way. And just track record, look at the accounts, look at the submissions um, and the reports that are done by SASRA, the SASACO regulatory body, they're called SASRA, they have a website and they have information about the different circles that are listed um, and they regulate them. So it's a good place to start when considering what circle am I going to go with. So please don't just jump into any circle, do a bit of homework, get to know who they are, what are the rules and how do they work and listen to members because those are the guys who have the first-hand experience with dealing with that circle. 
All right, guys. So before you join or sign up to any circle, please make sure you do your research. It's not a lot of work. Just make a few calls, read their bylaws, and as I've said, you must look at who the board members are because they're the ones who guide the company as well as the management. And subscribe to this show because that's how you're going to continue to get amazing, amazing information on all things money. This is Rena Hicks and you're on Money Wise where we create, grow and preserve wealth.